Welcome back to Pink Chair Part 2 with Madi. She is here with us again in the studio because we were talking about so many life-changing moments and her story is so powerful and it's like multifaceted. We wanted to touch on uh, about your meeting with your future husband, but first, let's talk about when you came to Las Vegas. Okay. And I know you had to correct me because mm -hmm. your father, you didn't know. I, I had my first um, real experience with him pre-Christ. It was uh, right when he got out of prison, uh, we had restraining orders against him, so they had to you know, let us know he's gonna be out on parole soon. So I knew that was happening, and I actually contacted um, one of his, I wanna say, his, one of his lawyers on his legal team, who I knew was still in contact mm -hmm. with him. And so I actually um, snuck to go meet him in California when he had just gotten out. And so I met him briefly, um, and then we kind of lost contact because I knew I couldn't be in contact with him. So I got, so I, I found him again, and that led me here to Vegas. Um, I came to visit him, I believe when I was about 16, 18. Oh, you were a teenager. Yeah, I was a teenager. I, I remember I was gonna be legal soon. Um, so I was like, okay, this is my chance. Go. I wanted to know him. I wanted to know his side. I wanted to know, you know, what qualities qualities that I had of his. And so I ended up moving here. Wow. Yeah, it was a huge. It was a huge. Um, a huge leap. So I I went to high school here, and. Um, that was my real, my first real experience with him as an adult and after he had just gotten out of prison. Um, it wasn't like a father-daughter experience. It was like I, I just moved in with a grown man. And so um, my, it was, it, we bumped heads a lot because by that time I was very headstrong and I was very, you know, tr tr had this chip on my shoulder, like prideful. Mm -hmm. And um, he he's a manic bipolar, wow. and so so we would clash a lot. And um, he was very verbal, verbally abusive. Um, he was very um, inappropriate with me. Um, so so I that was like another experience in my life right. that had just spiraled out of control and um, and was very just sad. Right. I, I remember um, I ran away two times on a Greyhound mm -hmm. back to California and I would end up coming back and um, it was just a very chaotic, toxic relationship mm -hmm. between us. Um, he was constantly wanting to um, control me and I was on this, um, on this, just uh, nobody's gonna control me, you know? Right. And um, I ended up just being fed up with it, and I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna figure out how I can get back to California or what I can do to make money. I remember I was sleeping on friends, on my friends' couches and just kind of, um, Surfing. <laughs> Surfing. And I, I didn't have anything. I, I, I left everything with my father, and um, I, I didn't have anything. And so I remember all my friends were either aspiring strippers, escorts. Right. And, um, you know, I was, I was in Northtown staying yeah. at a trap house. This is, this is Vegas. <laughs> yeah. And so I, so, I, so I was like, okay, you know, why not, why not escort? Why not? You know, I can do it. It's just, you know, make fast money. Right. I'll get to where I need to be. And I remember calling. There's a, there's a, a hotline that you just call and give them your information. Mm -hmm. They send you out on calls. Right. And so I remember calling them and giving them my information. Um, and, I, and I thought, okay, you know, this is just what we're going to do. And I remember my sister knew what was going on. She knew that I was just like, you know, couch surfing and just trying to 
survive out here. And she had just randomly got me a bus ticket to go back to California. And so before I could even, you know, go on the first call. Yeah. Before that even happened, I was on a Greyhound. I think it was like a 16 hour ride up to Northern California. And and I ended up in California. Wow. So that was like, I feel like that was God's intervention. Because I, 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 when I'm driving wow. around with Austin here mm -hmm. in Vegas, I am like, I was so afraid to come back. I was so like, it would, it triggered me. And I, and I, when me and when we're driving around, I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember this. Mm -hmm. I remember this building. And it brings back all these you know, memories. Yeah. It's like a trigger in a way. Yeah. Bad and melancholy memories, sadness and regret and everything yeah. else like that. And I'm just like, wow, like, I can't believe I'm back here. Yeah. So, you know what? I love that you shared that you were about to become an escort because it's that simple. Like, it's that simple. It's a need. It's like this thing inside of us that drives us where we need money or all our friends are doing it. You know, I... And thinking, oh, yeah. it's no biggie. No, totally. That's and it's no like big... the lifestyle of Vegas anyway. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of girls that get out of high school yeah. that want to go to college and then they end up becoming strippers mm -hmm. and they end up becoming escorts because that we are the highest per capita mm -hmm. for the sex industry in the country. Mm -hmm. So that was like a normal thing that you could have easily just gotten into. And then eventually, I believe you probably might have been sex trafficked eventually mm -hmm. because once you start escorting, pimps show up. Mm -hmm. They always do because they're ready and waiting to exploit someone and take advantage of them and how mm -hmm. cute you are and beautiful. I just can't imagine what would have happened to you. I'm so grateful that she called and got you on that Greyhound. Yeah. Thank God for Greyhounds. Thank God. And her intervention. So, Thank God. Uh, th you know, Vegas is, yeah, you live here now. Yeah. And how did you get here? So go to that story. How did you get back to Vegas? I should say. So, okay. So then I would, then I'd have to, um, tell you how I met my husband. Oh, he's let's the one talk who, about it. He's the one who brought me back here. Um, so after I got finished with my chemo and, you know, you have to have scans, at, I was having MRIs every three months mm -hmm. and, um, checking my eyes and to monitor my tumor. And so I was on, so I was going to Stanford. It was on a Monday. It was October 15th, 2018. And I was, I was, I remember I was trying to get out of this appointment cause I was like, I don't want to miss work. It's the same. Like I'm good. And I was calling, I called three times trying to reschedule it and I couldn't get out of it. So I was like, oh, okay. And so I was, I went to have my testing done. And after my testing, I met Austin. And, um, he Hold was that there. thought. <laughs> Hold that thought. We'll be right back. Many of you might not know it, but I had an alias. My name at one point used to be Fallon York. And in Las Vegas, I was a high class call girl. I worked for escort services in the 80s and the 90s, and I worked for hotel concierges. You wouldn't believe that, right? But it's absolutely true. In fact, I wrote a book about it, Fallen Out of the Sex Industry and Into the Arms of the Savior. Do you understand about the sex industry's ties to sex trafficking. The entire time I was a call girl in Las Vegas, I was being trafficked. Every dollar that I earned from the buyers went directly to my pimps. To learn more about this, just go to our website and order the book Fallen at hookersforjesus.net. You're going to get educated about sex trafficking and also what you can do to stop it. Welcome back to Pink Chair. Maddie is here sharing her story and how she met her husband. Her husband is actually someone that some of you might know. Uh, he was in a band called Of Mice and Men, and they met at a hospital. So, mm -hmm. Maddie, tell us more about when you went there. You said you met Austin, mm -hmm. and how did that go down? Um, it was right in the front of Stanford Hospital where the fountains are. There's some little chair, picnic chairs. Um, and we said hello and we just ended up talking and um, we found somewhere shady because it was really hot that day. We Did found you know who he was, by the way? 
Um, very like, I just knew, I didn't know everything. I didn't know he was a big deal. I didn't know he was um, who he was really. Mm -hmm. I knew he was a believer. I knew he was a musician. Um, so we found somewhere shady to talk and we sat there and we talked for hours and he, he was in a gown and he wasn't feeling good. <laughs> he was, Aww. he was having a hard time. I could tell he was Aww. having a hard time to walk and I had just got done having my eyes poked and we just wanted to sit and talk. And it was, it was such a, it was, I feel like the Lord was just, speaking through him. I had, at that point, I had, I didn't have any believer friends. I didn't, um, I didn't, nobody around me would, could understand what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And um, just how during times like that, how hungry and how thirsty you are to be near the Lord. And so we sat there and we, we talked about everything. We talked about everything. Um, I, I, we, I went back to his, um, his room there because he was um, there as a patient. I was there for testing. And we just sat and we talked, and um, it was so innocent, and it was so just natural and pure. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the end of the, at the, end of the day, I was, I, I'm not a very pushy person. I'm not really like... Um, Come on. It was so, it was so <laughs> not me to be like, so what are you doing tomorrow? You want to hang out? You know? So I, I ended up coming back the next day and we watched a movie together and it was the, I can only imagine movie. Oh, so, great movie. <laughs> so, um, I, I, w w we sat there and we watched it. And I remember sitting sitting in his little hospital bed with him and I was like this and just like, um, you know, right. I, I, and I remember his gown, his sleeve was up and I was wearing short sleeve and my arm ended up touching his. And I, I, it was just so surreal how much I trusted him going from being, you know, not being, feeling like I'm feeling scared mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and so used to being taken advantage of or um, having that anxiety and triggers like that. And I remember sitting there watching the movie and just being so moved and so shocked at what God was doing because I immediately felt it. Right. I immediately knew that this was a God thing. You Something know? was re happening. God was like making this like a situation where you felt you did you feel the Holy Spirit and yes. then also maybe safe. You felt safe. Yeah. And maybe even an attraction mm -hmm. to to the aura or to to his spirit mm -hmm. of understanding you. Mm -hmm. it, it, the first day I wasn't I was I was just thinking I didn't think that it was anything more than a friendship. And I remember being so excited and leaving like, oh, I have a friend, he's a believer, <laughs> and he has he's going through some gnarly hell things like me, and he understands. And I remember driving home. It was like an hour and a half drive home and, and just thanking God that he placed this person in my life. And then the next day, it was like, you know, I, it was just an instant trust, an instant love. And, and through your difficulty, I mean, you've got this tumor, and Austin, you can say what he has. He has a connective tissue disorder. It's called Marfan syndrome. Yep. Marfan it's very syndrome. rare. Yes, it is very rare. Mm -hmm. And it runs in my family. It's the mm -hmm. weirdest thing. Yeah. So when we got connected, it was like, whoa. Yeah. Um, my sister passed away from that, and no one knew at the time what it was. Mm -hmm. So they did a biopsy on her and then they told us, oh, she had Marfan's. I'm like, why didn't you guys know she had that before? Like yeah. she had all this classical signs. Yeah. But it's a serious thing, isn't it? Yes. It's like he's fighting for his life right now. Yes. And, he, and to have a normal life, like to be yeah, normal. It, yeah, to live a normal life. And Just like to, you are. It's and like, to battle um, chronic pain. I mean, it's, he, some nights he can't even sleep. Wow. You know, he's in constant pain. And to right. watch somebody who's in constant pain 
and still, you know, handing that over to the Lord. Like he teaches me things that he doesn't even know that I'm watching and he's teaching me. And he's, he's, it's, it just, before I met him, I remember telling my mom, like, I'm so happy being alone. I'm like, this is, I feel good. This is great. <laughs> I feel great. I feel content. I'm happy. And I remember I didn't even pray to meet anybody or anything like that. But it's just, it's, it's so overwhelming how the Lord knows what our hearts need. Yes, and he, he knows, does. you know, we think that we, you know, I didn't go out looking for him, but the Lord knew that I needed him. I love that. You didn't look. And, and I want to say that to the ladies out there. Ladies, stop chasing mm -hmm. your future husband. You will not catch mm -hmm. him. Am I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my personal experience. My oh, husband yeah. found me. You cannot push it. You guys just met. It was like a totally God thing. Yeah. You weren't trying to be aggressive. He wasn't trying to be aggressive, yeah. but God just went boom. Put mm -hmm. you guys together. And I want, I, when we come back, I want to talk about uh, how you guys got closer and then the proposal. Okay. <laughs> and how, how different that looked to you as you experienced it than what you thought it would be. Okay. Because our, our, you know, minds, like for me, like it was like, oh, he's going to get on his knees. Mm -hmm. He's going to be wearing all white. He's uh -huh. going to jump off the horse. And then he's going to propose to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's like it didn't go down like that. Mm -hmm. It was better, actually, mm -hmm. because that's the Disneyland mm -hmm. thought process. Mm -hmm. We always think we're going to be treated like, oh, the cartoon says this. The story yeah. says this. So I'm sure that there's a, an adventure beyond that because I saw some pictures on Instagram and yeah. I was like, oh, my <laughs> gosh. That's a fairy tale. <laughs> so I'm excited to share that and have Me you too. share about it. So we'll be right back, you guys. You don't want to miss this. This is the finale, <laughs> the last chapter of Maddie's story. My name is Annie Lobear, and I wanted to share part of the ministry of Hookers for Jesus, our nonprofit, is the Destiny House. Destiny House was created for the need that was arising in the Las Vegas Valley. I would go into the casinos and reach out to the women that were being trafficked by their pimps and tell them simply, God loves you no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been. He loves you right where you're at. And many times there was no place for them to go. I would take them out of their bad situation and bring them to the shelter. But God in my heart touched me and said, you need to create your own program called the Destiny House. And so that's what we do. We're in always need of donations, very often low on food, on our electricity being paid. You can go simply to hookersforjesus.net, click donate and join the fight against sex trafficking. Every dollar you give will go to our programs and helping the girls. Thank you. Welcome back to Pink Chair and Maddie on Fire. <laughs> that is part of your name mm -hmm. on your website, right? Mm -hmm. What is your website? Right. It's MaddieOnFire.com. And this is where people can purchase your my artwork. Art and just view my art and see what I'm doing and what follow I'm her. Follow her on Instagram. What's uh -huh. your Instagram? It's Maddie Carlisle. Okay. So you guys note that right now. Write it mm -hmm. down. Uh, you were talking about watching. I can only imagine with Austin, mm -hmm. but let's go back a little because how did you guys even get to meet? It was a chance meeting. What yes. happened? So, um, I had my annual testing, but he was admitted as a patient because, um, he was speaking in Southern California, um, and he had an allergic reaction. And so he went up to Stanford just by chance. Um, he was actually going to fly back to Costa Rica, I believe, right after. And so he went up to Stanford, and two days later is when I had my, my appointment there, my testing there. And so if, you know, that hadn't happened, if we hadn't been two sick people. I mean, that's a big place, right? You yes, probably wouldn't it's have huge, met. and Stanford has a bunch of little, right. you know, and my testing is at different locations sure. sometimes. Thousands of people going in and out? Yeah. And so it was totally, I really believe God set you both up and yes. it, that's incredible. And then what happened after the first place so that you both went together? Our first date was that following weekend. Um, once we met, we were completely 
inseparable. We, we just would talk all the time. And so we planned that weekend to spend it with each other. And so he had made, made um, close friends with another patient there who had passed away a couple weeks before I met him. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was a heart patient too. He had open heart surgery. And, mm -hmm. um, so he passed away and we had went to his, fu his funeral that Saturday. And so that was the first time that, um, you know, that was our first date. And so he had played a song for him, his, his, his friend Charles, and he played a song for him that he would play. He would, Charles would call him, they're both in the hospital, and he would play that song and help him go to bed when he was oh. having like a bad night. So he played that song at his funeral. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did, did everyone cry? Oh my it was, gosh. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was a good farewell home. Wow. Yeah. That's really incredible. Mm -hmm. See, and, and the artistry of your husband. Mm -hmm. It he's doesn't incredible. matter that he's, mm -hmm. you know, not in of my cement because of his condition. Mm -hmm. Now he has another, another talent. I mean, he still can sing. It's just, obviously. Yes. And that's incredible. That's just really touching. Yeah. So can you tell me, Maddie, about just like, I, this is a question I have to ask you because I, <laughs> it happened with Oz and I when we were dating. Did you guys stare at each other a lot in each other's eyes? Yes, and it was so weird because... And you couldn't stop. It was like... Yes, it was <laughs> so weird because I was never that kind of person. Right. <laughs> but um, with, you know, I feel the first week that we spent with each other, I, I feel like I was so... I was so shocked at what God was doing and, and how strongly I felt that that I could hardly lo look at him and speak, but we were constantly just mesmerized by each other, just like, you exist. Like, it's so And I, and I asked that question because the Instagram pictures of you two, are, they're so mm -hmm. adorable and cute when you, I think, it, I, I don't know, I think it was right before you got married and there was pictures of you looking at each other and mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, these two are these two are going down quickly. They're gonna be married soon. I see yeah. it, you know? And I was so happy because, you know, obviously you guys got married, but I was so happy for you silently. I, I was cheering you on from the background, going, Oh my gosh, I just this is a love story unfolding. Mm -hmm. And and I could tell it was true love. I could tell that God had touched both of your hearts. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's Christ's love, you know, mm -hmm. because Real love, true love, is unconditional. Uh -huh. It it moves all boundaries, and it 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 looks beyond the affliction, mm -hmm. and it reaches for what's true and what's good. And you felt safe with him. I feel like the Lord, like he, I was healing. I was healing, and I feel like the Lord was calling me out more. And he'll and, heal you and, through your husband. Exactly. I've been healed through mine, and I continually get exactly. healed. Exactly, and. I had never been in a healthy relationship before, and God, in a Christ, you know, so relationship bad. before. So how did he ask you to marry him? So we went to London um, for his sister's wedding, and I've never been out of the country, and you know, First time. he's been all around the world. You're and like, so <laughs> I, um, I love it. So we. Spent a really wonderful couple of days there, and he was like, "Okay, I forgot what day it was." He, but he was like, "This is our only day that we get to go, and we'll have free time to do whatever." And I'm like, "Okay." So, we were walking around London for like ever, and he was like, "I want to take you to this place. It's the highest building in the UK, and blah blah blah." And I'm freaking out because I'm terrified of heights, and oh. so. How do you fly? <laughs> I know. No, I'm good on planes, but I just cannot be. Uh, it was. Oh, my gosh. So we went to the Shard. We ended up at the Shard, and and he was just being, I mean, he's always super sweet, but he was just, he was just being so patient and just so sweet that day. And I was like, what Did is going on? Did you suspect something? Not that, because I don't know. I, I just... I didn't expect that. 
And mm -hmm. so we got to the very top and I was just shivering mm -hmm. because you can see right over and you're so high. And so he's like, come on, let's take a good picture. Let's make sure we get the background. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, somebody's gonna come take our picture. And I was like, okay, I didn't even care. I was, couldn't even pay attention because I was so afraid. And so um, right before we take the picture, he brings out uh, this piece of canvas that my daughter made for him. It's a bunch of different colors of her handprints. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I wanted to bring love with us, my daughter. And um, so he's like, hold it up really high. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just trying to get it over <laughs> with. And so he's like, okay, put it low. And, and you know, by the time I put it low, a bunch of people are watching. There's a person with a huge camera. I put it low and he's on his knees. <gasps> oh my gosh. And, and he asked me to marry him. And I was just... I felt like I was outside my body right. and just watching it. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> yeah. And obviously I said yes. And it was just, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe what was going on. Wow. I couldn't believe that I was there. I couldn't believe I was, he was real. I couldn't believe what the Lord, how the Lord had just, has been pulling us everywhere and guiding us everywhere and just carrying us. Right. And it was just overwhelming and I was crying and you know, I look at that painting right there with the with the lioness mm -hmm. and 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 the little cub. Mm -hmm. Is it a cub? Mm -hmm. It's a baby lion, right? Mm -hmm. So you you and your that's you and your daughter. Yes. And then God's hand is in the back in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. And I think about Austin as the lion. I've seen some of those paintings. So go to her website, everybody, because she's got those ones on there. Uh -huh. And that God completed that yes. picture you made. Yes. I I always thought, like, okay, I have my daughter. We're complete. I grew up with a single mother. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, be everything that she needs. But, you know, I could never be that father figure to her, no matter how much I tried. And so, I mean... That was the Lord giving my daughter a home. What's your favorite scripture? It is. It's Romans eight twenty eight, And we know that all things work together for, for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And both of you are called according to his purpose. You guys both have ministries together even. Like it's, mm -hmm. you, both of you are ministry in itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just wanted to thank you so much, Madi. There's so much more to talk about, so you have to come back. Okay. And hopefully we can coax your husband one day to come with of us course. and be on the show. But okay. thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I'm just going to be praying for you guys. And you guys go to her website, madionfire.com, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. madionfire.com. Mm 